So I just wanted to do a short video sharing a historic journal for me. And this is a journal that um, sort of got me back on track with journaling. I had journaled some as a kid and a little bit in high school, started doing it again pretty consistently. And um, I did some off and on through college, after college for a couple years I did it and then I stopped probably for um, four or five years altogether. And then um, I got this sketchbook right here which was just the sweet spot for me in terms of size and a little bit better of a, a paper quality so I felt um, like it was a little bit um, more serious and it could also hold a little bit more wet media and it's one of these Stillman and Burn sketchbooks. I think they're 9 by 13, the big ones that I get. And um, the date on this one um, is October 13th. Um, I'm sorry, October 2013 was when I started it. And I didn't complete it until February 28th, 2014, which is kind of a slow pace for me. Um, right now, for example, I'm filling um, journals a lot faster. But I just wanted to flip through the pages a little bit, give you an idea of how I was, what I was into when I started this. I was definitely into these um, geometric studies, and I was reading a book called How to Construct the Universe or something like that. And it was all about math and numbers and geometry. Um, very interesting. Hexagon and tessellation are things that are still interesting to me. Um, I was playing around more with some of these other symmetry and geometry things um, and um, I also did a couple designs for woodworking projects here's a good quote that I still like from Leonardo da Vinci if you do not rest upon the good foundation of nature you will labor with little honor and less profit good quote so just showing you know some of the different uses that a journal is good for. Here was an idea I had. I was still considering trying to bind my own sketchbooks instead of buying them. So here I had some designs for how to do that. Um, some practicing drawing and I was still using these um, I was still using some different uh, Prismacolor markers for my coloring back then and also Prismacolor pencils and you can tell I mean, for me, I see I see some of the same color um, tendencies that I have today, but I also think that um, I've learned a lot, hopefully. And this was all before um, I used watercolor, and so I think now I have much more sophisticated tools and a, a better eye for approaching color um, than I did back then. I was I was definitely interested in. Um, sequential art um, already. Um, let's see, lots of journaling, um, a teeny bit of nature journaling, like I drew these mushrooms here, but um, other than that, there's not that much nature journaling yet in this book. Um, one, one cool thing to see is the beginning of um, ideas for some of my books. So, um, for example, um, that's one that I still want to work on, but um, every track tells a story was basically born in this sketchbook here um, and a lot of ideas about how to draw tracks um, that were influential for me. Um, so here's some more storyboard stuff for every track tells a story and if you've looked at that book at all, um, you'll recognize some of these. Also, during this time, I got the chance to track a mountain lion through snow, and I journaled that in here. Every track tells a story um, is born right here. And then also during this time, I was preparing to uh, put together a portfolio for a graduate certificate program in science illustration at Monterey Bay. Um, and so I started doing these um, plans for posters about different things that I could include in my portfolio. So for example, one about friction fire and which plants are used and how does the technique work and what is the science behind um, fire by friction. I also really wanted to do one, and I still want to do this poster, one about the wild boar, Seuss Grofa, with a little bit of a range map. So just showing how this journal um, played an important role in me discovering that that was something I wanted to apply for 
that that was a career I was interested in pursuing and it got me motivated and now I can look back and see how that trip went because I traveled down there to the Monterey Bay area to investigate the school and talk to some students. Um, I also went to the aquarium while I was there and drew some bluefin. I definitely want to get back to that aquarium um, sometime soon and do some more drawing there. You can really see here, um, here's a good example of um, what my landscape approach was back then. So I probably spent 45 minutes drawing this with colored pencil during the sunset and um, you know it was in a public place so I was faced with that difficulty. It was a pretty complex subject in a lot of ways there's a lot of texture on this beach and I, I didn't really have a good toolkit for for dealing with color and so I feel like now I have better approaches for doing landscape ethos so biting off a smaller chunk and just doing a smaller cropped landscape um, and I also know how to use watercolor so getting this journal right here, this sketchbook, this Stillman and Burns sketchbook was definitely influential um, for me and sort of started me on this path. See here I'm trying to nature journal some tracking stuff. So I, I'm already looking at John Muir Law's stuff, but I haven't bought a palette yet. See look, you can tell I'm looking at his, um, his book about drawing birds, see, because I'm practicing these different exercises that he has in that book. Um, I have some notes about my bows that I was shooting at that time. Um, let's see. Yeah, a little bit more nature journaling here. So this is sort of the birth of the nature journaling and just playing in the journal. See, and I'm already starting to fill pages a little bit more than I used to. So the combination of this format um, plus, I would say, this um, bag right here has... It came in maybe just after this journal, after I filled that journal, and this was something that um, John Muir Laws recommended also. He recommended one of these bags, you know, with just a shoulder strap, so you can swing it around when you're outside, just flip it open, and you, your sketchbook comes out. And look at the Stillman and Burn just fits in there so well. The other thing he got me to use was these water brushes, which makes watercolor portable. And this is his palette, which was expensive, and I wanted to be stingy about it, but I'm so glad that I just bought it, because um, having a portable palette like this, with colors that have already been chosen to be good for the California um, landscape, uh, was great. And the fact, the portability of these two tools gives me so many color options, whether I'm in the field, at an aquarium, or in a museum. like. Those drawings I did of um, the tuna, I would probably have approached that in a very different way if I were there today um, at the Monterey Bay Aquarium with this kit. Um, I would have gotten a lot more out of it, I think. I, I remember on that day that I was at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, I was carrying a whole backpack. Um, and I had like bins with colored pencils in them. And you know how hard it is when you're wearing a backpack to take things out to draw and so like I had to make a spot for me to sit down and it was just it was awkward um, I think I came through and did this ink afterwards but just goes I just want to share you know this is my first journal where um, you can kind of see how I got started on a lot of this stuff um, and I just want to show you my kit and give you a little bit of the history of what I've been doing that way when you see some of my more recent drawings and more recent journal page flips you have sort of an idea that I've been doing this for about four years and I filled 25 of these um, 25 of these sketchbooks and most of them have a hundred pages and so I, ha I haven't filled all of the pages in all of the books but pretty dang close so you know I'm up there over 2,000 pages of journaling and just wanted to share a little bit and and just give you give you some motivation for starting starting a journaling practice of your own